Hello there, friends and RC family. My name is Alec from High Noon Hobbies, and if you are new to this channel, I very much appreciate you checking it out. I hope you will stick around, watch at least this video, see if this content seems worth your while, and consider subscribing so that then I can say to you, if you aren't new here, welcome back to yet another Friday upload. This time, uh, we are taking a look at some upgrades that I just recently did to the TF2 Marlin Crawler from A&M Garage, which I know uh, a lot of people have been asking about different upgrades that you can do for the TF2. TF2 platform. These are the ones that I definitely recommend and I will continue testing and tuning on these but I think this is going to be a really fun kind of overview and first initial impressions of the uh, a and Garage. Uh, I would say just the shackle reversal kit, but we did way more than that. So just generally speaking, most of the AM parts that you could be considering for your TF2 Marlin Crawler, I'm going to be taking a look at in this video, and I'm going to have some uh, hopefully useful information for you on the kits, the different kits, the installation of them, and uh, the different problems, and uh, the, the good things that I found about these kits. Before we get into that, I do want to say uh, welcome to the first upload of 2020. I'm really excited to be here with you guys. I'm really going to be trying to keep the quality of this content just incrementally getting better and better throughout the year. So I'm really excited for all of you who are just joining us on this journey. We're in the second year of the hobby for me and I've already learned so much and I'm excited to learn so much more and just see so many more new things and go out to a bunch of awesome new events. Uh, we, I want to say I appreciate each and every one of you that joined us for the January 1st for the New Year's live stream where we announced the winner of the High Noon Hobby 2K sub giveaway uh, that one's over there will be more giveaways coming this year so definitely make sure that you're subscribed if you aren't already so that you know when those giveaways are coming down the pipeline but congratulations to Mike Bird, one of our OG watchers on the channel here. He absolutely deserved to win the 2K giveaway and I'm really stoked to send out this XB servo from Shift. Uh, can't really see it. Terrible glare. Am I bad at this YouTubing stuff? There we go. Uh, super stoked to send that out to him as well as the merch of his choice and uh, and I hope to see y'all at the next live stream, uh, the next giveaway live stream. Hopefully we have an even bigger audience. We reached our biggest live audience during that live stream that we had so far and uh, that was really awesome. It was fun to see all of you there. I really enjoy getting to spend some time with you guys live, answering questions live and just interacting in general. It feels like just a big crew of awesome friends and I really, I really appreciate all of you for being there uh, with me for that one. On that same note, the High Noon Hobby 23 merch is still there, still on the website. Go ahead and check it out. If you haven't already, highnoonhobby.com forward slash shop. You can check out a whole bunch of new merch uh, that I designed for this next season. All of those purchases go towards helping me with uh, all the expenses of getting out to these comps, putting on different events, getting prizes for you guys. Uh, just generally making things work. This YouTube channel barely, barely makes any revenue. It makes enough revenue for like maybe a half a tank of gas. And so uh, just to kind of give you a an equivalent there, like for one hat sale on the website is a month of making videos. So your purchases on that uh, shop definitely are a huge impact on the channel. The support means a ton to me and I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I get it. Not everyone can purchase merch. That's totally totally understandable and even just throwing a like down on this video leaving a comment down below to let me know what you think that is uh valuable extremely valuable to me as well and then the last reminder that i have for you is that we will be starting up the high noon hobby uh, patch of the month so to speak program it's not going to be monthly patches at least right now but we are going to be doing kind of a a uh, patch for patch for a cause, if you will, kind of like crawling for a cause, but we're doing crawling patches for a cause. So 100% of the profits from all of these patches that we're going to be releasing in 2023 are going to different organizations. We'll have more information to share on that soon, but definitely keep your eyes peeled and your ears perked for that information on all of the social media channels, which reminds me to remind you to subscribe to the High Noon Hobby YouTube channel, but don't just stop there. Go ahead and find us on Instagram, High Noon Hobby on Instagram. Follow us there. You get a whole bunch more 
more, uh, a whole bunch more information and a ton of kind of behind the scenes uh, looks at different stuff and maybe even some sneak peeks of stuff if you follow the Instagram account, High Noon Hobby on Instagram. And then also follow us on Facebook. That's where you're going to see a lot of the information about High Noon Hobby events. Uh, if you don't want to keep up to date on the website, we will be putting all the information uh, for the events on the website as always. Uh, but sometimes I know it is a little bit easier to find that information on the Facebook page. And then one last reminder that if you want to get in touch with me, the easiest way to get in touch with me is via email. Email is one thing that I can check on the daily. It's really hard to keep up with all the comments and DMs and everything like that that I get. But if you send me an email at highnoonhobby at gmail.com, I will try to respond as quickly as I can. And I do fairly decent at that. So that's everything that I've got for an intro. Let's just jump straight into this video and uh, see what I think my first impressions and my first thoughts of installing and running the a &M Garage parts on the TF2 Marlin Crawler. This is going to be fun. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so first things first, what did we get from a &M Garage? All right, well, we got a high clearance bumper and the shackle reversal kit. We got the high clearance flat skid and T-case mount. We got the anti-wrap bar system. We got sliders for the TF2 for the Marlin. Uh, we got a rear bumper and that's it. They do also sell an unassembled bumper kit if you are brave or handy enough to handle that on your own. I'm personally a huge huge fan of my TF2 Marlin. Obviously, I got the Marlin RTR kit and I have loved it ever since ever since day 1. Uh I've had a blast with this. In fact, I ran this stock for quite a while. And then after I ran it stock for quite a while, the few little upgrades that I did was a winch and a winch controller. I did uh, the RC four wheel drive, the Warn 8274 winch and the wired winch control unit. I definitely wouldn't necessarily recommend the wired winch control unit. It's big, bulky, and it just seems like it doesn't really have a ton of great functionality, but it does work and it's what I used for the entire time that the winch was on the truck. It worked fine for me, it's just I think there are probably some better solutions out there. I did also upgrade the electronics in the truck. I went with a Castle Sidewinder 4 paired with my Holmes Hobby Revolver V2 Snub Nose, the 2040 KV version of that motor. Now that motor was in the Pig. If you guys, uh, I don't know if I ever necessarily showed that on the channel, but the Pig was a very, very heavy rig. And eventually I figured that as I continued to add more scale accessories to the Pig, it was probably a good idea to upgrade to a slightly larger motor, but the snub nose uh, seemed to fit perfectly in the Marlin crawler, and it was definitely a very nice upgrade. I love the electronics that I had in there, and I decided to keep them the same when going through all these other upgrades. All the upgrades that I did prior to these ones were great, but there were still a few pretty big issues with the Marlin crawler that I personally was having. The biggest issue was ground clearance, and the biggest reason for this issue was the cross member that holds the uh, transfer case in there that goes underneath the frame rails is just absolutely obnoxious. It hangs down so low and it's the only thing hanging down that low and it's got very sharp edges meaning that it catches on everything. So especially for hard breakover angles the Marlin uh, definitely struggled big time just because of that one small little piece. The other issues that I had were durability. There was an issue with uh, well essentially the the stock bumpers and slide or at least the rear bumper and the sliders were all plastic and they did not last very long. They didn't ever fully break on me and completely separate from the truck, but the rear bumper cracked almost on the first day out, I want to say, and the rear or and the sliders, they were just not really holding up to uh, the abuse that I was putting them through as well as just being bumpy and weird and hanging wrong and not having like a smooth surface for rocks to actually slide over. In terms of sliders, they weren't doing much sliding. My final complaint is that I just kind of wanted a little bit of overall performance upgrades or, or a little bit more performance out of the TF2 Marlin. I knew that the electronics that I had in it were dialed and I knew that it was a very capable platform, uh, but I just wasn't quite seeing what I wanted out of the truck, especially if I was going to use it as a class one crawler. So I figured that these A&M upgrades would be a perfect way to get it ready for the C1 season coming up. There are plenty of build videos 
out on all of this A&M stuff. So I'm not going to go through and show you every, every nitty gritty detail of installing this. Not only because there are a ton of videos out there already, but also because when I went to Cameron's house to do all of the installations of this stuff, or most of the installations of this stuff, I forgot my head cam. So sorry, um, but I do want to say that there are a ton of great options out there when it comes to seeing how to install this stuff and really getting kind of those finer details that I probably just don't do that well with anyways. Um, the biggest one, a and Garage does have their own YouTube channel and on the a and Garage YouTube channel, they do have pretty pretty good in-depth videos for the anti-wrap bar, the skid plate and the transfer case uh, flip, and then also the shack reversal. So those are the three major kind of things that you're going to maybe want some insight as to how to install them. And those videos do already exist. I'll link to them down below as well as, you know, somewhere around, I don't know, somewhere over there. Um, but those are some great videos that I definitely recommend checking out. But I'll give you just kind of a summary or a few little bullet points of different uh, issues Issues that I had with the uh, with the install or things that I thought went particularly smoothly so the, for the first thing on the front bumper really the front bumper installation went pretty smooth I, I wasn't expecting it to be quite so easy but it really wasn't difficult at all to do the shackle reversal that's something that I did watch the AM video for so I understood how the shackle reversal was going to work and essentially to kind of give you a very brief overview of what the shackle reversal does uh, the problem that uh, the TF2 has stock the way that the shackles the way that the leaf springs are set up in the front when you hit a ledge and you go up and over that ledge the uh, the axles actually when they they actuate or when they articulate they push forwards which causes all sorts of issues and so the shackle reversal essentially makes it so that they instead of pushing forwards they push backwards which uh, loads the suspension and gets it in the right spot to kind of climb up and over things uh, it also gives you a bit of better approach angle, which is kind of what I was in it for, but I didn't really realize just how much that uh, articulation issue was an issue until after putting this kit on. And then I was able to visually see just how much the uh, articulation had changed on the truck, and it definitely seemed a lot more planted in the small amount of testing that I did. The one issue that I ran into with that bumper install was, well, really just getting the nuts and bolts to screw into one another on the back half. Uh, the there's two bolts that hold the bumper in on the in the front two holes and then there are two holes on the side in the rear that a bolt goes uh, all the way through and meets with a nut on the other side of the frame rails now it's not a bad design necessarily and i really don't think there's any way around this but just getting those nuts tightened on the bolts uh, it, it was a very awkward angle and really that was kind of the biggest pain in the ass but if that was the biggest pain in the ass then i'd say i don't have much complaint there it was relatively simple to get all installed the other thing that I will mention is that that front bumper sits really, really, really close, pretty much pressing on the Marlin uh, TF2 body, the Toyota body that the Marlin comes with. This is something where you might want to take a Dremel and just shave off just a tiny bit of that body. I got away without doing that just because I have 3D printed body mount posts on, coming off the side of my chassis. I just bent those 3D printed uh, body mount posts just ever so slightly towards the rear to get the body to seat maybe a millimeter or so further back from its initial position which seemed to be enough to get that bumper to clear without any sort of issue speaking of bending the next kind of weird thing that i figured out was with the sliders the sliders that run along run along the side of either side of the chassis they are uh, they come like perfectly flat which seems fine uh, but when they're perfectly flat they don't give you any clearance to actually mount the body onto those body mount posts on the side so instead of kind of coming up with some other solution i went with the monkey gorilla way to fix this and i just bent those sliders down just ever ever so slightly by doing that i was able to clear those body mount posts and i also felt like the lines followed the body better once i was able to bend it down just a little bit just a hair you kind of want to do small bends and then check and then a small bend and then check and see if that's enough for you you don't want to overbend it but they are relatively malleable so it's not a huge deal if you overbend you can definitely correct for it and I didn't seem to, uh, I didn't see any issues from doing that and seemed to work out just fine for me. But that's something to, uh, something to keep note of. The high clearance skid and the T-case mount 
seem really intimidating to install, but honestly, it was probably one of the easiest parts of the installation. It did take a little bit longer, uh, but really that was mainly because I made the decision to move or to flip my battery tray from the rear position that comes with stock to the front position so that I could hold the battery up a little bit more towards the front of the truck, get that weight just a little bit farther forward. And uh, I don't run huge batteries, so it's not a huge deal to me, but I decided to try it out. By doing that, though it means that you do have to drill an extra hole for the t-case mount the new t-case mount that uh, flips that t-case over or if it doesn't flip it over uh, just kind of pulls it up so that that skid can give you even more clearance underneath uh, i did have to drill one hole but that was really really easy and again there are tons of videos out there showing you how to do this the AM one was perfect it worked worked fine for me there is another one i can't remember the guy's name but i'll leave a link to his down below as well he had a really good video showing how to do it as well the biggest pain probably of this entire installation process every single part was figuring out drive shafts after doing all this when you do the t case mount and especially if you do the transfer case flip like i ended up doing i did that flip to get the overdrive from doing it. And if you don't know about that, that's something where I would recommend going and watching that a and installation video of the flat skid or of the high clearance skid. It's gonna give you a ton of information about what it means to flip the transfer case and do different things to the transfer case to uh, basically change the gearing going to the front and the rear. Uh, the way that I managed it is I took the transfer case and I literally just did a 180 flip. Uh, and by doing that, I essentially, and when I say that, I mean vertically, not horizontally, right? Yeah. Uh, you'll see it. There's videos happening right now. You get to see what I did. Uh, but by doing that, you essentially give the front wheels a 40% overdrive. And there is a way to avoid that overdrive just by opening the T-case up, flipping a gear around, and uh, keeping it kind of in the more stock configuration, at least in terms of the way that it interfaces with the drive line. But Nonetheless, the biggest issue that I had was getting all the drive shafts to fit. Um, that is just something that no matter what drive shaft can fit or no matter what T case configuration you choose, you're going to have to deal with some odd drive shaft lengths. The front drive shaft is much much longer than the stock one or you need a much longer one than the stock one and the rear actually I think might lose a little bit of length or if anything it stays pretty much the same but I'm fairly certain it loses a little bit of length. Either way, I didn't have a huge, huge issue with this because I did have the Axial WB8, the Wild Boar 8 uh, HD kit, which is like a $60 drive shaft kit but it comes with a ton a ton of parts trees with all sorts of different spline spline gears and stuff like that for you to choose from the biggest issue though that i had was figuring out that from that kit the actual the actual couplers do not interface correctly with the transfer case output shafts so the axial couplers for the drive shafts are too shallow and the marlin uh, transfer case or the tf2 transfer case the output shafts on that are too long and because of that you end up getting some binding issues so i did have to go and uh, go through and shave off about three millimeters or maybe maybe a little bit i think it was about three to four millimeters off of those output shafts basically got down to the point where it was it wasn't quite concerning me yet but if i had to go any further it would have started to concern me about the actual pin that goes in there and whether or not i was going to have an issue with that pin potentially boring its way out um, because of how close the end of that output shaft was but I haven't had any issues with it yet. I haven't done a ton of testing with it, but it seems pretty sturdy. Like it's not going to, not, again, not going to cause any long-term issues. And this could be, this issue could be easily avoided by using a different style of axle shaft. You could use the Incision SCX10 axle shafts. I know that those work fine, or, or not axle shafts, uh, drive shafts. Those work fine. Uh, you could even just use the stock couplers and use the axial uh, splines. Those that also works that's totally a valid option uh, the reason that i ended up doing what i did is because i actually broke one of those couplers one of the tf2 stock couplers so i was trying to replace it with an axial one and it turned into a big hoo-ha but i did get it all figured out and that was literally the most annoying part of this entire installation 
The only other kind of issue that I had was with the anti-wrap bar. When I went to install the anti-wrap bar, I realized that I had made a mistake in what I ordered. I should have ordered the driver side anti-wrap bar. Instead, I ordered the passenger side anti-wrap bar. Now, the passenger side would be totally fine. It would be a very legitimate option if you weren't doing the transfer case flip like what I did to achieve that 40% overdrive. But because I did the transfer case flip, it makes it so that dr that uh, drive shaft comes out to the right side of the rear of the transfer case, which is way too close to where that anti-wrap bar sits uh, on the actual chassis. And there's a 3D printed part that uh, a and Garage provides to space that anti-wrap bar out from the chassis. It's very, very nice, very clean, elegant design. I love it, but I had to ditch it, and I ended up getting a little bit creative and just using some pivot balls to space out that anti-wrap bar enough, but not too much to where it started to interfere with that drive shaft. So again, not a huge issue, although I will say, you gotta kinda know what your plan is beforehand, um, before ordering these parts, or at least if you're going to be doing this, realize you might have to get a little bit creative with, uh, with the way that you install some of these. But the pivot ball solution worked great for me. I used just this, or the uh, bolt, the nut that were supplied with the anti-wrap bar and just went through, uh, went through the opposite side so that the nut was on the far side so it didn't interfere with the drive shaft and just used, uh, I think it was two pivot balls, but you're seeing it right now. So a couple pivot ball solution for the spacer and then the nut uh, and the bolt going out of the chassis frame on the other side so it didn't hit the drive shaft. And that's it, guys. Uh, that, that You're ready. You're ready to hit the rocks. Well, almost. You see, I had an issue after the fact, and anyone who's familiar with the Sidewinder 4 and a revolver combo, you might might have seen this one coming, but by adding all these a &M parts, I did add a decent bit of weight to the truck, and by doing that, I ended up throwing off the startup powder on the startup powder, the startup power on uh, the uh, the Sidewinder 4 tune that I have. So I have a tune on the Sidewinder 4 that was definitely designed, built for uh, the much lighter weight truck that I had before doing all these mods, and then after doing all these mods, I did notice a pretty big issue with stuttering down low just on the uh, on the uh, slow speed I went through double checked the, my installation of everything made sure that I wasn't getting any binding issues or anything like that that would have been happening mechanically couldn't find anything like that the drive shaft interfaced with the T case it was straight everything was looking good or the drive shaft coming off of the uh, off of the actual transmission was straight into the T case everything was good no binding issues there and no binding issues in the axles so far as I could tell so it's definitely just an issue with startup power I haven't been able to tune it yet but I will be tuning it soon and then I'll be going out for another uh, tuning and testing session here soon so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that because that's where we'll start to really learn uh, uh, how impressive all of these a and parts really are. That being said, what I can say right off the bat, just with the small amount of testing that I was able to do in Cameron's uh, dungeon area, his, his testing facility, uh, what I can tell you is that the clearance on the belly of this truck is far greater. It is much improved from where it was from stock, and I noticed that right out of the gate. Just the first little bit of testing I did showed that that was that was obviously improved, much improved. The sliders themselves were also much improved. They were far more functional than the stock sliders and also far more predictable because they are just flat metal sliders. You can actually kind of tell what a rock's going to do when it gets jammed up in there and how your truck's going to slide off of it versus when it's plastic and it's just a bunch of nubs, you really can't quite tell what it is going to do. I'll definitely be getting used to the weight of the truck now. It is definitely a heavier rig than it was before and I may have to play around with tires and foams to offset some of that especially side hilling now I felt like the Marlin crawler with the weight that it had before was just about perfect for the foams that were in it the foams are definitely stiff but that stiffness helped a lot with sidewall uh, without with sidewall give it would prevented a lot of sidewall give on uh, on steep side hills but you know, that's something that I kind of expected, and I'll probably, I may stay with the same tire setup. I really do like the tires that are on this, but I might just try to throw some squid foams or something like that in it, see if I can eliminate that sidewall roll. Other than that, though, I would say 
greatly, greatly improved performance from the AM parts. I'm very, very happy with my purchase. Definitely recommend messaging him on Facebook or Instagram uh, before you make your purchase on their website because he will give you some hefty discounts if you do so. I'll leave a link to AM Garage, their website, as well as their Facebook down below. These are some mods I would highly recommend doing. Uh, right out of the gate, I can tell this is going to be a huge, huge performance increase. And these, these mods came to me highly recommended already. So I'm sure they will do great for you. If you have any questions or comments, comments though leave them down below i want to hear what you guys have to think i appreciate you making it to the end of the video that's all i've got for you this time and uh, we'll see you next friday but until then make sure you subscribe and uh and so that you can you can see when that next upload's coming and enjoy some scale trailing and maybe some hard lines all right guys we'll see you next time cheers